practical pedals you have to use in order to have victory over the flesh. The first one is the clutch. I mean, I'm sorry. The first one is called consider yourself dead. The Bible starts with overcoming the flesh with this verse. Romans chapter 6 verse 11. It says, Likewise you also reckon yourself to be dead indeed to sin, but alive to God in Christ Jesus our Lord. It's interesting. In here it does not say that therefore crucify your flesh. It says consider. Somebody say consider. So that means you have to consider yourself, reckon yourself, think yourself. This is not about what I do. This is how I think. Now, why do I consider myself dead to the flesh? First of all, let's just start with this. In our culture today, it's very popular to think of yourself in a way that's factually not true. Uh, a guy in um, a Dutchman in Netherlands court actually went to court to change his birthday, change his age from 69 to 49. You know his argument was, I feel 49. I identify as a 49. He actually brought a note from a doctor that says, yes, he feels 49. So the judge declines the offer and he says, well, I appreciate that you identify yourself 49, but the problem is there are facts we, we can't shift and change because of how you identify or feel. People do the same thing today with their gender. You know, they're born, for example, a male and they say, well, I identify as a female. Well, the problem is that no matter how much you identify, consider and think of yourself, there are facts your feeling, identifying cannot alter. But the opposite is also true. It's possible to have facts that do not influence and update your thinking. It's possible to think one way when the facts are completely opposite. For example, the Bible says when Jesus died in Romans, that our flesh, the one we're battling with, died with Him. So why am I still battling with it? Well, we don't start with the battle first. We start first with the victory. You don't overcome your flesh by fighting your flesh first. You overcome your flesh by considering. This is what I call the clutch pedal. You got to press this all the way to the end and you have to come in agreement in your mind and heart with what God says about you, not with the struggle you're currently going through. By birth, you identified with Adam, but by baptism, you identified with Christ. Come on somebody. When you were born, you identified with Adam. But when you got into water, you symbolized your life and said, I identify with Jesus. That's why Christians call our members of Christ. Why? We identify with Jesus. We're called branches and He's divine. Why? Because He's not just our Lord, He is our head. We identify with Jesus Christ. So if I am battling with some craving, if I am battling with some demonic passion, if I am battling with some kind of an inward battle, I don't start with that battle. I start with His victory and I say, I identify with Jesus. I reckon myself dead to this sin. It still might have a hold over my life, but because of baptism, because of my belief, I identify with Jesus. And from the point of victory, I will fight. From the point of triumph, I will fight. And from the point of His death, I will put to death the lust of the flesh. Amen. This is so freeing because it's not about what I'm doing. It's about how I'm believing. And sometimes the struggle is so strong, we think the flesh is the one that's supreme in my life. Even if it acts supreme, it's already been crucified on the cross. Now this on the other hand does not mean that the flesh is gone. Just because you press the clutch pedal, it doesn't mean you're going to drive. Now you will roll, just not drive. In order to drive, you're going to have to use other pedals. Point number two is not only we consider ourselves dead already because we identify with Jesus. Point number two is we crucify the cravings. The scripture says clearly, those who are Christ's, meaning we identify with Jesus, have crucified. So it's not talking about Jesus crucifying now, it's us crucifying. Alright, so we know that the flesh is already dead 
You may say, but I don't get it. If it's dead, why is I have to crucify it? Because on the cross, Jesus crucified, destroyed the flesh's power, not its presence and not its, not its influence. And now you and I have also a work to do and that is to crucify its desires as the Bible says and passions. Galatians chapter 5 verse 24. I call this using the brake pedal. Now for those of you who drive manual, you're heroes in my eyes. You know one thing is that not only you have to know how clutch works and the accelerate pedal or the gas pedal works, you have to learn and you have to use the brake. Now you don't use brakes to get forward, you get brake, you use brakes so you don't end up in a hospital. We use brakes so that when it's a red light we stop. We use brakes in, in case somebody in front of us decides to either slow down fast. So the brakes are very important. We don't drive on brakes but if you drive without having them you will not drive very long. Christian life is not about don'ts but if we don't have don'ts we won't have any do's. So many Christians limit to their life, I can't do this. I can't, oh we as Christians we can't get that, we can't get that. That's not what Christian life is about. But if you don't have a brake pedal in your car, okay, because you're so free spirited and because you're just so focused on ad, just just adventure just just me and just God just, it's all about love it's all about self-expression and liberty I'm a friend that self-expression and liberty can end you in ER as Christian life we know that Jesus gives us all things to enjoy even in the paradise he gave Adam every tree to eat from but he still put a brake pedal there don't touch that one we still have don'ts and we have to have seasons, moments in our life where our flesh has to get a break. A good time to use a brake pedal is on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday when it comes to fasting. You can, when you're fasting, when you're abstaining from something that's not of God, when maybe you're drawn to a conversation or to a meeting that you know if you go there it's going to pull you away from Christ. This is a good moment. Do not be a Christian who constantly only uses the gas and simply say, well, I'm just moving forward, moving forward. You can't always move forward without ever having moments that you crucify. Put to death, the Bible says. Deny yourself. But our Christian life is not about that. But without that, there's also no Christian life.